Set them to vibration now. Thank you. Okay, if folks could take their seats. Shh. If members could take their seats, Councilmember Grudenchik. Eh, eh. Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Quiet the chambers, please. Quiet down, please. Down. Members, please take their seats. We could close the door in the back. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag. flag. Please be seated. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Ayala. Presente. Shh. <laughs> Thank you. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen, Constantinides, Carnegie, Deutsch, Diaz, Drum, Present, Espinal, Here, Eugene, Gibson, Here, Jonai, Grudenchik, Holden. Kalos. Here. King. Borelli. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lantzman. Here. Lander. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Carnegie. Present. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Torres, Traeger, here, Ulrich, Ballone, here, Van Bramer, here, Williams, Jaeger, Deutsch. Torres.
Matteo. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. All quiet in the chambers. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Reverend Dr. T. Genjitsu Nakagaki, the President of the Buddhist Council of New York, um, 376 Broadway in the Borough of Manhattan. Quiet in the chambers. Uh, please join me in meditation and prayer. As we celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, we remember that New York City consists of various diverse communities, religions, and cultures. In a Buddhist tradition, the full moon day of May is considered a sacred day called Vesak, which celebrates the birth, the enlightenment, and parinirvana of the historical Buddha. It is a time to celebrate the preciousness of life that each of us has received, awaken to the full potentiality of each life to attain enlightenment, and fulfill the mission that each of us has. So many things are happening in our society, and so many things are happening in our lives. Yet, we should not be controlled or deluded by all the things around us. Now we need to clear our minds and find what we really need to do and what we really need to be focused on to benefit all New Yorkers. Let us nurture the seed of peace and happiness within ourselves so that it will result in beautiful flowers in ourselves and in our society. Uh, please relax yourself and release tension from your body and mind. Close your eyes lightly and focus on your breathing. Breathe deep using your lower stomach instead of your lungs. Let us plant the seed of peace and happiness within ourselves. Let us nurture the seed. And let us share the, our seeds with others. Peace and blessing to you all. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Quiet in the chambers, please. A motion to spread the invocation. Council Member Chin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and uh, thank you to Reverend Dr. Ki Kenijisu Nakagahi. The Reverend is also a teacher, author, and spiritual leader. Ordained as a Japanese Buddhist priest, Reverend Dr. Nakagahi is the president and founder of the Haiwa Peace and Reconciliation uh, Foundation of New York as well as the president of the Buddhist Council of New York. In addition to his work promoting peace across the country, Reverend Dr. Nakagahi also served as the NYPD clergy liaison and have organized the annual 9-11 World Trade Center floating lantern ceremony for nearly a decade to remember the victims of the attack on 9-11. I want to thank Reverend Dr. Nakagahi for gracing us with his invocation today, and I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. So moved. 
Adoption of minutes, Council Member Landsman. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of March 22nd, 2018 be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. Excuse me, M42 through M48, the mayor's executive budget. Uh, finance. M, excuse me, M49, city debt and reserves. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M50 through M54, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. Quiet in the chambers for a roll call vote. Shh. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannan. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Diaz. Okay. <clears throat> Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Brannan. Aye. Lanceman. Lan Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Menchaca. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call ups are adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> Uh, first, I would like to begin, if folks could be quiet, by honoring one of our nation's heroes, Specialist Gabriel Conde, a U.S. service member who was killed during combat operation last week. He was only 22 years old and died just weeks before his deployment was scheduled to end. We hold Gabriel's memory in our hearts and we grieve with his family, friends, fellow soldiers, and the rest of our country. Second, we honor Mark Natale, one of the brave NYPD officers who risked it all on September 11, 2001. Officer Natale succumbed to brain cancer that he contracted from that fateful day down at Ground Zero. He was 55 years old. Our thoughts and prayers are with his loved ones 
and with the entire NYPD. We recently celebrated Workers Memorial Day where we commemorate the sacrifice so many workers make simply doing their job. Moving forward at each stated meeting of the City Council, I will read the names of workers who have died on the job here in New York City. Mutka, uh, Mukhtar Dialu, a sanitation worker who died in November of 2017 but was misclassified as a homeless man by the company he worked for to avoid penalty. Young Kil Sim, a 62-year-old food market worker who was crushed by illegally installed equipment. George Staub, 57-year-old Department of Transportation electrician, was fatally struck by a car while performing routine bridge maintenance. And lastly, we remember the NYPD officer who shot himself outside of an NYPD facility recently. His name has not been released yet, but we still hold him in our hearts and in our prayers. Let us take a moment of silence if folks could please rise in the chamber. All rise. Thank you very much. Before we begin with our agenda, I would like to acknowledge two outstanding public servants, two legends in this New York City Council who are now, sadly for us, retiring, but happily for them and for their families. I mentioned at the last stated meeting uh, Margaret Griffin of our land use division, and at this stated meeting, Peg Toro of Administrative Services. So Margaret, Margaret Griffin is really the unsung hero of our land use division. Yes. And I see Gail Benjamin sitting up there, who was our land use director for many years. <laughs> Margaret is the person that makes sure the land use trains run on time, and our land use trains run on time better than the subway cars. And for 28 years, she has been an incredible source of support, kindness and love for so many of us at the council and especially her colleagues on the 16th floor at 250 Broadway. Peg Toro has been there for every single one of us in this room, every step of the way, always supremely patient with our questions and concerns pensions, health care, buying back time, whatever the concerns are, PEG, Tier 4, Tier 3, Tier 6, I think Ramon's Tier 1. I'm joking, he's not. PEG's depth and breadth of knowledge is actually a real loss to the city council. And to quote both Camille's, Camille Kimchi Fad and Camille Francis, PEG Toro is simply irreplaceable. So again, I want to thank them both. Hi, Margaret. Good to see you. We also say goodbye to another member of our team, uh, Kayla Howell, who works in scheduling in advance. Kayla joined the City Council when Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito hired her 
as Director of Scheduling in Advance. Before that, she was managing former President Bill Clinton's schedule. So her life, uh, she's done a lot in a short amount of time. And I was very happy to have Kayla on my team and we wish her well as she moves on to the Mayor's Office of Appointments. Margaret, Peg, and Kayla, we thank you for your decades of service to our city. The council won't be the same without you, and we miss you already. One big final round of applause for these amazing women who have served the city council. So jumping into our docket for today, the council will vote on a number of finance items. We are voting on five Article 11 property tax exemptions. Livonia Regina in Councilmember Justin Brannon's district. Uh, Mushulu Grand in Councilmember Andrew Cohen's district. 153 Manhattan Avenue in Councilmember Mark Levine's district. Grower Green in Councilmember Antonio Reynoso's district and Leggett Avenue and Councilmember Diana Ayala's district. I want to thank Rebecca Chasen from the Finance Division for her work on these important finance items. Uh, we are also uh, voting today on uh, a series of land use items. We are voting on Montefiore Cemetery. The council will vote on a bill that will allow a cemetery corporation that owns land in Queens to use up to two additional acres acquired before 1973 for cemetery uses, provided such land is across the street and such a cemetery corporation first obtains approval for such from the city. This bill is necessary to effectuate an application by Montefiore Cemetery to convert land it is used as a parking lot into additional burial plots. This project is in Council Member Danique Miller's district. We miss Danique, he is out uh, because he had surgery recently and that is why he is not here today. So we wanna make sure that he's home, recuperating, getting well. So please reach out to our friend and colleague if you haven't done that. We are also voting on a very exciting and important project in Council Member Donovan Richards' district, the NYPD's 116th Police Precinct the council will vote on the site selection of the 116th police precinct in Southeast Queens. This is a major milestone in addressing the longer than average response times by the NYPD for residents in Southeast Queens. The 105th precinct manages over 350 miles of roadway and residents who rely on this precinct for emergency response face longer than average response times compared to the rest of the city. The addition of the 116th police precinct will assume half of the 105th precinct's territory to allow the NYPD to respond faster to emergency events in Southeast Queens. Local civic leaders in Rosedale, Laurelton, and Springfield Gardens have advocated for this additional NYPD presence over the last 40 years in Councilmember Donovan Richards' district. So I wanna congratulate him. He has worked on this since he was first elected to the city council, even before that, when he was a staff member here in the council. So congratulations, Donovan. Uh, St. Andrew's Community Daycare Center, the council will vote to approve the site selection of a daycare facil facility in Councilmember Carlos Menchaca's district, 1618 Fulton Street. The council will vote on the Department of Housing Preservation and Development's application for the approval of an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the development of a 100 unit, 100% affordable housing building in Councilmember Robert Cornegie's district. That is a feat. Congratulations. Uh, 1490 Southern Boulevard, the council will vote on HPD's application for approval of an Urban Development Action Area Project, a UDAP, to facilitate the development of a 10-story mixed-use building with 114 units of affordable senior housing, on-site supportive services, and 4,500 square feet of community facility space to be occupied by the LGBT network. This project is located in our land use chair, Rafael Salamanca's district. I really wanna, uh, I really wanna thank him 
because he worked very hard, not just on this project, but there are a series of projects in his district that he himself set aside more units for supportive housing for formerly homeless individuals to help us with the housing crisis and homelessness crisis here in New York City. And I really want to recognize his leadership in that. I'm really grateful, uh, Chair Salamanca, for everything you did on this project and a series of other projects. Paul Robeson Houses, the Paul Robeson Houses, is seeking an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the preservation of two 100% affordable buildings, again, 100% affordable, totaling 81 units in Councilmember Bill Perkins's district. And lastly, Archer Green, HPD, is seeking council approval for an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the construction of a 350 unit mixed use development in downtown Jamaica, Queens. This affordable housing development, again, is located in council member Danique Miller's uh, district. I wanna thank the entire land use division for their uh, work on this, and I especially wanna thank our land use director, Raju Mann. Today, the council will vote on several resolutions calling on the state legislature to strengthen our rent laws. Although the state law on rent regulation does not expire until next June, it is possible that the state legislature may take up renewal of rent laws before the end of the session. The council is urging the state to make changes highlighted in these resolutions, which would help preserve thousands of rent regulated units. I am proud to sponsor a number of these resolutions. Resolution number 326 would call on the state legislature to enact the appropriate Senate and Assembly bills in order to limit rent increases where landlords are charging a preferential rent and would only allow an increase from a preferential rent to a legal regulated rent upon vacancy of the unit, not at renewal. Resolution 325 would repeal the Erstat law and allow New York City to regulate residential rents. Resolution 327 would call on the state to enact legislation extending the statute of limitations for rent overcharges. Resolution 328 would call on the state to enact legislation which would require the surcharge to, be, to cease once owners recoup the cost of building-wide improvements. Resolution number 332, sponsored by our housing chair, council member Robert Cornegie, calls upon the state to enact the appropriate Senate and Assembly bills, which would repeal vacancy bonus. Resolution 331, sponsored by council member, again, Robert Cornegie, our housing chair, it would call on the state to enact legislation that would, peel, would repeal vacancy decontrol. Resolution number 339, sponsored by council member Keith Powers would state that the City Council supports state legislation that would set the percentage rent increase available to owners of certain rent control departments to lesser of 7.5% or the amount equal to the average of previous five rent guidelines board increases. And Resolution 340, sponsored by Council Member Carlina Rivera, would state that the City Council supports state legislation that would extend rent stabilization to unregulated apartments. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Megan Chen, Caitlin Fahey, and Jose Conde. Finally, we will vote today on a package of fire and emergency safety bills. The council was prompted to introduce legislation to address fire safety after a series of Bronx fires in late December and early January that resulted in 15 deaths and 29 injuries. In the aftermath, we've worked to develop legislation to make sure tragedies like these do not happen again. My bill, Introduction 599A, would ensure fire safety guides are distributed in apartment buildings and fire safety and prevention educational materials as well as relevant trainings are provided to building staff. Additionally, the FDNY will be required to submit annual reports on such outreach efforts. Introduction 602A, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli, our fire chair, would require that all doors and residential occupancies be self-closing by July 31st, 2021, and it would also create a Class C violation of the Housing Maintenance Code for failure to keep and maintain self-closing doors. Introduction 603A 
sponsored by Councilmember Costa Constantinides, would codify the FDNY's existent, existing hydrant inspection practice and require detailed reporting. Introduction 604A, sponsored by Council Members Robert Cornegie and Chaim Deutsch, would require that after January 1st, 2021, smoke alarms in residential occupancies that are installed within 20 feet from a fixed cooking appliance must comply with standards for reduction of nuisance alarms. Next, introduction 606A, sponsored by Council Members Donovan Richards and Chaim Deutsch, would require that the FDNY, in consultation with the Office of Emergency Management and the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, they would have to develop a checklist to assist individuals with disabilities or limited mobility in developing individualized emergency evacuation plans. Councilmember Richie Torres sponsored three bills in this safety package. In fact, the tragic fires that took place in Councilmember Torres's district were the inspiration for many of these bills here today. Introduction 608A would require the posting of notices within residential buildings regarding the importance of closing doors when escaping a fire to prevent the spread of that fire. Introduction 609A would require the FDNY in consultation with the Department of Education to develop and implement a plan for educating children and parents about common fire dangers and prevention measures. Such plans will include outreach at schools, public service announcements, and information on preventative measures be taken by parents. Additionally, the FDNY would be required to report annually on such efforts. An introduction 610A would require that all landlords provide stove knob covers to tenants in units where children under the age of six reside to prevent children from playing with or using the stove, which we know can cause fatal fires. These three bills by Councilmember Torres and this package of bills are common sense measures that collectively will hopefully prevent future tragedies. I wanna thank the staff, Josh Kingsley, Megan Chen, William Hongich, Jose Condi, Rob Calandra, Sarah Gastelum and Jin Lee for their work on this entire package of bills. That concludes uh, my remarks on today's state agenda, except there's one thing that's not on here, which I wanna say. We are also voting today on two nominations to the City Planning Commission. It is Staten Island Day here at the City Council because we are voting on two gentlemen who have served our city with distinction, with honor and ably for decades. We are voting on an appointee by Mayor de Blasio, Alan Capelli, who previously served on the MTA board for Staten Island, and he currently serves on the Civil Service Commission, and he is a longtime uh, friend of mine. And we are voting on the renomination, but now by Borough President James Otto, for a former member of this body, Alfred Cerullo III, who was a member here and served with Councilmember Kozlowitz. And he has been on the City Planning Commission for 14 years, serving, I believe, uh, the city under five mayors and all five council speakers. They are two fantastic men. They are two wonderful New Yorkers who have done a great job for our city and will continue to do a great job for our city. They are just two menches, really. They are just wonderful human beings. I am grateful that they have put themselves forward to continue to serve our city. And I ask all of us to please vote in favor of these two great gentlemen. And with that, I conclude my remarks. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Discussion of general orders, beginning with Council Member Vallone. Thank you, Madam Advocate. Uh, very excited today to stand forward and put forward probably one of our, our greatest packages of school safety bills uh, that I've, I have seen. It all started with a little incident at 184 where an emotional incident turned into a eye-opening experience for us to take a look at safety in our schools, in all schools, our public schools and private schools. So very proud to introduce 921, 922, 923, and 924, along with a series of package of bills for many of our council members today, which will create our very first school security task force, a package of legislation that will finally look at our school safety in our city. 
They will meet quarterly to take a top of bottom look at school safety throughout our city by having the NYPD, Department of Education, Office of Criminal Justice recommend and implement policy changes that make our children safer. It will require reviews of our current evacuation plans and crisis Member, response protocols. I love you. Yes, my love. But we're going to do introduction of bills at the end. You got it, man. Today. Thank you very much. I was very no, excited I, what you I told very, I am very excited about this package as well, and I think it's important that we hear about this package. It's an exciting package. So we will come back to you Thank first you, on Speaker. the agenda for the introduction of bills. The next, the next speaker on discussion of general orders, Council Member Deutsch. Thank you. Thank you, Public Advocate. Uh, this past December, a horrific fire in the Bronx, and now uh, my colleagues, uh, District Council Member Richie Torres, um, claimed the lives of 13 people, including one year old baby. The fire started because a toddler was able to reach the knobs in the stove and turn them on. And the fire began to spread quickly when his mother ran out of, the, out of her apartment, leaving the door wide open behind her. A fire is always tragic, but in particular uh, painful when we, could, when we know that we could do uh, we could uh, have measures to have those prevented. Intro 609 mandates the FDNY to come up with a plan to educate students and their families about fire safety and prevention. And intro 610 requires the installation of stove knob covers in apartments where young children reside. I thank Councilman, Councilman Richie Torres as well as Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. for their partnership and leadership on these three bills. I also want to thank my colleagues for the past support for the Get Alarmed NYC initiative, which successfully installed more than 150,000 smoke alarms in homes across the five boroughs. We implemented this program in 2015 after a terrible house fire in my district that claimed the lives of seven young brothers and sisters. This past December, my district, my district experienced another tragedy with a house fire that killed a mother and her three children. One thing we know for certain is that when a functional smoke alarm is, is present in the home, there is a 50% greater chance of survival in a fire. I look forward to continuing to work closely with my colleagues to ensure that this critical life-saving program continues to operate. Finally, I want to congratulate all my colleagues that are passing bills today, in particular Fire Committee Chairman Joe Borelli and Council Members Carnegie Richard Constantinus and Speaker Johnson, all of whom are passing fire prevention bills that will make New Yorkers safer and smarter about fire safety. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Borelli. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Public Advocate, and I, I appreciate you remembering all our names all the time, but for some reason, I'm hoping that this is the last time you're ever mentioning any of our public names uh, again, you know, at some type of press conference or whatever. Too soon, too soon, maybe. Um, I want to thank the uh, speaker. Uh, Make sure the clock's running on these remarks. <laughs> I want to thank the speaker for uh, giving me the opportunity to chair this committee uh, and pass this package of bills along with Chair Cornegie of the Housing and Buildings Committee. We are very blessed that we live uh, under the watchful eye of the FDNY, who is the uh, premier fire department in the United States of America, if not the world. Um, but we see incidents where fires happen and the loss of life is tremendous uh, and tragic and sadly preventable. And over the years, this council has enacted uh, many, many times when building materials have changed, structural uh, engineering has changed, uh, and we've made these changes uh, as a body. And today we're doing just that, both with the package of bills coming out of our committees uh, and with my specific bill, uh, 602, which requires self-closing doors. It closes any loopholes for private property owners in multiple dwellings to not have these doors. I just checked HomeDepot.com. They are a $24 item uh, that could save countless lives in the event of a fire. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank our Fire and Emergency Management Committee, uh, Josh Kingsley, William Hongak, uh, Jin Lee, uh, and my Chief of Staff, uh, Frank Mascia, for their uh, work on this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Richards. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I wanted to speak about the police precinct. Uh, for nearly 40 years, communities in the 105th Precinct have asked for a new precinct focused on Southeast Queens only to see their requests fall on deaf ears. Finally, thanks to the hard work of the 116th Precinct Task Force led by uh, Best to Beat Them, uh, Commissioner O'Neill, the mayor, and our office, the 116th Precinct is moving along rapidly. As the speaker said, the current 105th Precinct encompasses 12.7 square miles with 355 miles of roadways, including seven major highways. 
This is more highway miles than a trip to Boston or Washington, D.C. But I'm happy to say today that we are one step closer to making the issue of long response times and a distant police presence a thing of the past for the residents of Laurelton, Rosedale, and Springfield Gardens. Commitments for the one, new 116 precinct include $7 million for the construction of a safe city, a self-contained education and administrative facility designed to help school students learn about street and pedestrian safety. We also got a commitment for a lot of repaving uh, for the area surrounding in Rosedale that, that has been, needed, and been in need of paving for a long time, and a minimum of, of 800 square feet of dedicated community facility space located within the precinct, especially as we talk about community police relations. Uh, we also have a community advisory committee throughout that will be formed uh, that will focus on ensuring that it gets built and that through the design and construction phase of this project, things are moving along on a, a good timeline. Uh, the new 116 precinct will help improve response times and most importantly ensure that our quality of life is both sustained and improved. I'd like to thank the speaker, both chairs, uh, Chair Salamanca and Moya for uh, their partnership in getting this done and the esteemed council land use staff led by Raju Mann. And I want to thank John Douglas and my uh, deputy chief of staff as well, uh, Devaney Brown for her work on this as well. So thank you. Thank you. Council Member Salamanca. Thank you, uh, Madam Public Advocate and uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today we're voting on an exciting project uh, with incredible potential in my district, 1490 Southern Boulevard. As we all know, the city's facing an affordable housing crisis and in our race to build and preserve 300,000 units, each and every one of us council members should be doing our part in getting the city to this goal. Today, I've approved more than 4,000 brand new affordable housing units in my district. Today we'll be voting on another Excuse me, I apologize, Council Member. Quiet in the chambers, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, today we'll be voting on another 114 affordable units paired with new services that help some of our most vulnerable populations and formerly homeless seniors. The 1490 Southern Boulevard project will bring 100% affordable residents for seniors, including a 30% set aside for formerly homeless seniors, 20% more than the mandatory minimum. The remaining units will be available for up to 50% AMI. For this project and other new developments coming to my district, I'm going to start setting aside at least 15% for the homeless, five more than the mandatory minimum. And I encourage and hope my colleagues will join me in doing the same for future projects in their districts. I would like to thank Taipei developers for their partnership on this project and bringing in key groups to offer much needed programs in my community. I'm excited that the Jewish Association Serving the Aging will provide on-site support services for my seniors and thrilled that the development will include the ground floor community center partnering with local LGBTQ leaders and groups to ensure that the LGBT community, LGBTQ community in the Bronx can seek high quality services in their own borough. Thank you to the land use team, Raju, Amy, Julie, and Jeff for all of their time and efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cornegie. Council Member Cornegie. Going once, going twice, seeing none. Um, report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Resolution 333, organization funding. A couple of general orders. Pre-considered LU 74 and Resolution 342 through pre-considered LU 78 and Resolution 346, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management, Intro 599A, 603A, 608A, 609A, Fire Safety Package. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 602A, 604A, 606A, and 610A, Fire Safety. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Intro 212A, Cemetery Uses. Amended and coupled on general orders. LU 51 and Reso 347, Montefiore Cemetery. Coupled on general orders. LU 60 and Reso 348, Sidewalk Cafe. A couple to be filed pursuant to a letter of withdrawal. <clears throat> Excuse me, LU 61 and Reso 349 and LU 62 and Reso 350, 116th 
precinct. Coupled on general orders. LU 63 and Reso 351, Child Care Center. Coupled on general orders. LU 64 and Reso 352 through LU 69 and Reso 355, tax exemptions and a UDAP in the Bronx. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections, M35 and Reso 356, approving the appointment of Alfred C. Cerullo, Planning Commission. Very proudly coupled on general orders. M39 and Reso 357, approving the appointment of Alan P. Capelli, Planning Commission. Equally as proudly coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar. Intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled to general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers, please, for a roll call vote. Adams. Mission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. I rise today to proudly announce intro 867, legislation to represent countless New Yorkers living in densely populated communities who experience the difficulty of traveling down two-way streets jammed Excuse with Council parked member? vehicles. Excuse Council member? Council member, Is yeah. this the introduction of a bill? We're going to wait till the end for the introduction of bills. Today we're just voting on the bills in front of us, but thank you. We will I hear from you soon. We will you. put you on the list. How do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. <laughs> Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I first want to say that I want to commend all of those who are leaving. Wish you well especially Peg. And to the items that we're voting on, I vote aye on all with the exception of LU 64 and accompanying Reso 352. In my opinion, affordable is a dangling participle, going back to our English days. If you are wealthy, you can afford anything. If housing is coming in and it is within the range of the AMI of the people who live there, then it's affordable. But if there are units set aside that are not in proportion to the uh, AMI of the people who are presently living there, to my, in my opinion, it is displacing people. And based on the demographics of this area, the top AMI of 120% coming into that development does not match what is presently there. So for that reason, I'm voting no on LU 64 and Reso 352, I on all the others. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Continuing roll call. Borelli. Uh, I on all, and uh, pr I'm proud to vote for uh, Alan. Uh, um, yeah, and Fred. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, Fred. Brennan. Aye and all. Cabrera. Permission to vote on all items and resolutions to this general calendar? Yes. Aye and all. Thank you. Chin. Uh, congratulations to my colleagues on their important legislation. Aye and all. Cohen. Aye. Carnegie. Deutsch. Permission to explain my vote? I yes. have, uh, thank yes. you. I uh, will be introducing something soon. I vote aye and all. Thank you. <laughs> Oy vey. <laughs> Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. I vote aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. With my warmest congratulations to all our colleagues passing very important legislation today, I vote aye on all. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. I rise to vote aye. <laughs> King. Councilmember King. Who? Yeah. I will aye, and I also want to congratulate uh, all my colleagues passing all the bills, and, and especially my labor uh, council member, Samalanka. <laughs> Kozlowitz. 
Congratulations to Alan Capelli and Fred Cirillo. I vote aye on all. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. <laughs> aye. Moya. Aye on uh, LU call ups and uh, aye on all. Perkins. Aye on all except uh, LU 64, Reso 352, I vote no. Powers. Aye on all, and I want to give a very big congratulations to my friend Fred Cerullo for his appointment. Very well deserved and very happy to be voting in support of him and everything else. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, Madam Attorney General, I mean public advocate, I vote aye on all. Uh, Madam Attorney General, hey. <laughs> Richards. I vote aye. Rivera. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye, and congratulations to the Staten Island appointees, Cirillo and Cap Capelli, and good luck and best wishes. And I'm really going to miss Peg Toro. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I vote aye on all, and in particular, uh, of course, congratulate my colleagues on their bills, but I really want to congratulate Fred Cirillo, who um, I first met when he was a council member and who has been an amazing public servant his life, all his life. Thank you. Thank you. Salamanca. Uh, I would like to vote aye on all, congratulate my colleagues on the passage of their bills, and a big shout out and congratulations to Councilmember Richards on uh, getting a new precinct in his district. Torres. Um, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, the Belmont fire was a profound trauma for the district that I represent. It was the most destructive fire our city has seen in three decades, and I just want to give my deepest gratitude to the speaker and my colleagues for acting so swiftly in the wake of tragedy, identifying a crisis and then legislating lessons learned. We know from the experience of the Belmont fire that if there had been self-closing doors or safety knobs, the fire would have been prevented. And even though we cannot turn the clock back, we certainly can legislate lessons learned so that tragedy is prevented in the future. And I want to thank my colleagues for acting so decisively. I also want to pay a debt of gratitude to my colleague, Councilmember Salamanca, for providing a space for the LGBT community in the Bronx, which is among the most vulnerable in the city. There continue to be LGBT youth who are bullied at school and evicted from their homes at the hands of their own parents. And to know that there will finally be a refuge for that community. Um, as a gay man who lives in the Bronx and has been bullied and has gone through some of those experiences, um, I'm just deeply grateful for your leadership on this issue. With that said, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Uh, so our, first of all, I want to congratulate the speaker and all my colleagues on the passage of, of, of their bills and uh, <clears throat> congratulations to all those uh, for their appointments. Um, our country is the only developed country in the world to not offer paid parental leave to employ employees. It's time to change that. I'm proud to be a prime co-sponsor of majority Leader Lori Cumbo's resolution 311 uh, to extend paid fa family leave benefits to city employees covered by municipal unions. Our city is far behind other cities and states when it comes to paid parental leave and family leave. I'm also proud to pass my resolution today, 312, calling for a 100% salary reimbursement rate for those who take paid family leave. To be clear, taking care of your newborn, raising a family is not a sickness or disability. And with that, I vote aye on. Ulrich. I vote aye, and I ask uh, unanimous consent to vote on the land use calendar items. Yes. I vote aye. Thank you. Valone. Aye on all. Van Bramer. I vote aye on all, and just want to say also that uh, Fred Cerullo is a class act and an amazing public servant, and very, very proud to vote for him. Williams. May I excuse me, my vote? Yes. Uh, congratulations to uh, all of my colleagues. Um, on all of their bills, 
I did want to just talk about rent regulation for a time. Um, as I uh, travel the state, and I'm not speaking to hyperbole, if there's one issue where I've seen the, the least amount of leadership, it is housing and homelessness across uh, this state, and I've said it before my uh, current dreams, and I'll repeat it now, uh, the governor and the leadership in Albany have been palpable failures when it comes to housing, when it comes to homelessness, and right here in New York City, we see what's happening with rent regulation. I always give credit for the tenant protection unit that was created. We wouldn't need that if the governor and others had done their job, period. So I'm happy that the city council is doing everything that they can when it comes to rent regulation, but it is not enough to pay lip service. There are communities that are being ravaged, not just in New York City, as I'm finding out, but all across the state. I hope people who have found their progressive jacket that they can put on now uh, after the election, uh, if they're still there, uh, do the things that are needed for communities to survive. So I'm going to vote aye on all with the exception of LU 64 and company resolution where I'm going to abstain. abstain. I do want to credit uh, my colleague for getting uh, some Section 8 units in there, uh, but I do think as we move forward and funding, any city funding that touches a project, I should, think should dictate a, a broader spread. I, I believe and we must assist middle, middle income families. We must assist those even at 120% of AMI uh, because a teacher, a firefighter, a cop uh, makes that much combined. But if they are suffering, I know that people on the $30,000 level, $25,000 level, even $40,000 level are suffering. And so uh, we got to just try to get a couple more units when we're doing these projects. And so for that reason, I didn't want to vote no, but I am going to extend on those and I am all the rest. Thank you. Yeager. Madam President, may I have the excuse to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> I vote aye on all, and uh, I just want to briefly speak about two uh, wise New Yorkers who uh, we are approving their appointments today to the City Planning Commission. Fred Cirillo was a council member when I uh, came to this house uh, in 1994 as a young aide to a freshman council member. Uh, he uh, doesn't remember me, but I remember him. He is incredibly wise, generous and a decent human being whose history in this city is extraordinary, and he's going to do us proud. And uh, as Mr. Speaker spoke earlier today at the Rules Committee, Alan Capelli has been a mentor to so many people who started out in government at very young, young ages. Um, he was my mentor, uh, my boss in, uh, for four years, uh, my friend, my teacher. Um, he is an incredible human being. He has done his borough so well on the MTA board. He is going to do us incredibly proud on the City Planning Commission. I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Matteo. With congratulations to everyone's friend, Fred Cirillo uh, and Alan Capelli. Uh, I know they represent us well on the City Planning Board. Aye on the rest. Combo. I also want to share my congratulations to Fred Cirillo and Alan Capelli, and I vote aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I was remiss in not uh, wishing uh, two people here today a uh, happy birthday. I want to wish happy birthday to one of our photographers here, John McCartan. Uh, today's his birthday. And I want to uh, wish a happy birthday uh, to uh, my personal chief of staff, not the council's chief of staff, my personal chief of staff, Eric Botcher. Today is his birthday as well. So happy birthday uh, to both of them and a belated happy birthday to Mayor de Blasio, whose birthday was yesterday. And with that, I vote aye on all. Council member, Go ahead. Council member King. Member of permission, public advocate, can I vote on all land use items and call ups and general order calendars today, please? Yes. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to the fine gentleman from Staten Island, Fred Cirillo. And, and happy Alan birthday Capelli. to Antonio Reynoso. <laughs> Thank you. And happy birthday to all. All items on today's general order, order calendar were adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of land use 64 and resolution 352, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two negative, and one abstentions. And the revised land use call-up vote is 46, 49 in the affirmative, excuse me, and zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to their respective committee as indicated on the agenda. So now a discussion of resolutions, and there's a number of resolutions. For those who are voting n negative or um, to any of these resolutions, please approach the desk. 
or um, for the purposes of abstention, please approach the desk. Let's begin. Resolution 307, a resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass, and the governor to sign legislation that would authorize same-day voter registration in New York, allowing eligible New York City residents to register to vote and cast a ballot at the poll site on Election Day. All of those in favor? Aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. 311, resolution calling upon New York City to extend paid family leave benefits to city employees covered by municipal unions. Anyone wanting to speak on the bill? All of those in favor? Aye. All of those opposed? Ast any abstentions? The ayes have it. 312, um, resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to amend the State Paid Family Leave Act to provide workers in New York State with a benefit equal to 100% of an employee's average weekly wage. Any, um, anyone wants to speak on the bill? Council Member Cumbo. Thank you. We want to extend paid family leave benefits to city employees covered by municipal unions. In 2016, Mayor de Blasio signed a personnel order that provided a paid family leave program at 100% benefit to 20,000 managerial and supervisory employees not covered by a municipal union. We have to send a message loud and clear that paid family leave should never be confused or substituted or associated with a sickness. We have to make sure that we change the thinking so that we can become a city that recognizes that all families throughout the city of New York require and need paid family leave. We do not want paid family leave to be utilized as some bargaining chip where over 144 unions could have no paid family leave to some semblance of it, to some having a very comprehensive plan. All families deserve paid family leave and it should never be associated with paid sick time. People should not have to negotiate a sickness with making sure that they take care of their child. So I just wanted to have all of my colleagues support this important initiative because this is going to change the way we raise families in the city of New York. Thank you. Seeing no one else, oh, Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to join uh, my colleague, Lori Cumbo, uh, in, in supporting this uh, very important resolution. Um, uh, it is uh, impossible for us to uh, call ourselves um, the most progressive city in America if we are leaving hundreds of thousands of city employees behind when it comes to paid family leave. And uh, as Councilmember Cumbo said, uh, it should not be a bargaining chip in a union negotiation. This is something that the city should uh, come in with at the outset of every uh, contract negotiation and say, this is, this is not a, a, on the table for negotiation, but this is in fact a, a right that every, uh, every family has if they're a city employee. We're requiring it on a state level of the private sector. It's the very least we can do to ensure that public sector employees, particularly those that are unionized, have this right. And so I want to uh, also uh, join my colleague in, uh, in encouraging my, the rest of my colleagues to vote aye on this resolution. Thank you. Councilmember Williams. Thank you. Uh, want to call my colleagues to... Uh, We're discussing Resolution 312. Oh, my apologies. Never mind. Oh, you, no, I do actually, um, I do want to support that as well and, and follow in the words of my previous two colleagues. Um, even with this, and I generally uh, try my best to give credit where credit is due, uh, the governor has touted faith family leave uh, across the state. When you take away the mirrors, you find out that he allowed a lot of people uh, to opt out including cities, including agencies, so people who work for SUNY uh, don't have it, and we see that UFT are struggling. And so hopefully when he's taking credit for something, it is something worth taking credit for. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I hope the mayor stops using this as a mayor, uh, bargaining chip, because he too has touted this as something that he has championed, while at the same time preventing a union, uh, uh, a group of people who actually very much need it uh, from preventing it. So I would like to just be on the record of supporting as well. Seeing no one else, all of those in favor of Resolution 312, all of those uh, want to vote aye, say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Pre-considered Resolution 324, a resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign. A, 5382A, the Voter Enfranchisement Modernization Act of 2018, an act that establishes an electronic personal voter registration process and provides for online voter registration. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All of those in favor of the bill say aye. aye. Any, any uh, all of those who vote no, say no. Any abstention? The ayes have it. 
pre-considered Resolution 325, a resolution calling on the New York State Legislature to pass, and the Governor to sign uh, Senate 3179 and Assembly 5557, which would repeal the Erstat law and allow New York City to regulate residential rents. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All of those in favor, say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Pre-considered Resolution 326, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign, S6527 and S Assembly 6285, which limits rent increases on renewal of rent-stabilized units where a preferential rent was being charged. All of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Pre-considered Resolution 327, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation extending the statute of limitations for rent overcharges. All of those, in, anyone seeking to speak on the bill? All of those in favor say aye. aye. Any op opposition? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Uh, Pre-considered Resolution 328, resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign S4312, legislation amending the administrative code of the city of New York, the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974 and the Emergency Housing Rent Control Law in relation to making the major capital improvement, MCI, rent increase a temporary surcharge. Anyone seeking to speak on the bill? Council Member um, Gibson. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I'll be very quick. Um, all of these resolutions in which we're being asked to support related to rent stabilization and really protecting the affordability of rents in a city are very, very important. As a former member of the State Assembly, these bills are certainly not new. Uh, these bills have been carried by Assembly Democrats for many, many years, and I really want to applaud the City Council and our Housing and Buildings Chair, Council Member Cornegy, for their leadership and our speaker, because we really have to make sure that vacancy decontrol, repealing Earthstat, and really looking at the permanent rent increase that an MCI does provide means that rents are still rising um, to unaffordability levels. And I am grateful that this council recognizes the important role that we play working with our colleagues in the state. And hopefully, as things change in the state Senate, maybe we will actually see these bills pass and codified in law. Um, so I want to commend all of my colleagues and look forward to working with the state to make sure that we really enact significant changes in our housing infrastructure. Thank any, you. Seeing any, any other speakers? All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Uh, any abstention? The ayes have it. Pre-considered resolution 329, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign Assembly 7404 in relation to requiring a new party to file a certificate follow, following the election at which the party obtains party status. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All of those in favor say aye. All of those opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Pre-considered resolution 330, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign A9758A, Senate 7149, in relation to the political expenditures of limited liability companies. Anyone seeking to, to speak on this bill? All of those in favor say aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Pre-considered resolution 331, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign S3482, Assembly 433, in relation to repealing vacancy decontrol. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. 332, resolution calling on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign Senate 1593, Assembly 9815, in relation to repealing the vacancy bonus. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All those in favor say aye. All of those opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Pre-considered pre, pre resolution 336, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign. Assembly 7623, Senate 8840, and A9608B in relation to authorizing ballot by mail, no excuse, absentee ballot voting, and early voting. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All of those in favor say aye. Uh, you're waning, guys. Uh, <laughs> any opposition? <laughs> any abstentions? The ayes have it. Uh, Pre-considered resolution 336, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign A uh, 
I, we did that. Uh, Pre-considered resolution 337, resolution by this Council of the City of New York, ratifying council action in Council et al. versus Carter. New York Supreme Court index number 153498 of 2018, verified petition filed April 17, 2018, a lawsuit filed to preserve the separation of powers enshrined in the city charter and council members' free speech rights to express their policy positions by filing amicus briefs. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Preconsidered Resolution 338, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign Assembly 9923 in relation to improving the format of ballot proposals to minimize confusion. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? Uh, all of those in favor say aye. Any opposition? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Preconsidered Resolution 339, a resolution calling upon the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign Senate 6925, Assembly 268, which will provide rent control tenants relief from rent from high rent increases. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All those in favor say aye. Any, any opposition, any abstention? The ayes have it. And lastly, pre-considered resolution 340, a resolution calling on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would extend rent stabilization to unregulated departments. Anyone seeking to speak on this bill? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposition? Any abstention? The ayes have it again. Anyone opposed to any of those bills, please approach the desk. And now to general discussion. Councilmember Ballone, now you can introduce all of your bills. <laughs> When you call on us, we rise and we speak, Madam Advocate. That's what we do. So uh, an incident in my district, and I think it kind of mirror images all of us when a parent comes up to us and asks us that question, is it safe for my child to go to school, was the one that really shook me and led to the bills today for us to make sure that we do everything we can. So at 184 in Whitestone led to a District 25 CEC meeting, and then subsequently conversations with all of us talking about what we can do, do to be proactive today and not reactive. And these bills, and I'm so proud, there's so many of them going in today with my fellow council members, will for the first time look top to bottom at safety in our schools, at what we can do to make them as safe as possible, what procedures are in place, what coordination can happen between the agencies, and finally give the parents the, question, the answers they've been looking for. That's why today we're introducing uh, 921, 922, 923, and 924 which will create a school security task force, a package of legislation that will finally look at our school safety. Uh, they will meet quarterly and safety throughout our city by having NYPD, Department of Education, Office of Criminal Justice recommend and implement policy changes uh, for all of our children in all schools. It will require reviews of our current evacuation plans and crisis response protocols, update infrastructure technologies, including security camera systems, develop coordinated preparedness procedures for the community and city agencies at public and non-public schools, increase public notification for school emergencies, and train school personnel to better handle all of our crisis. This legislative package would not be possible without the support of our dear friend uh, and our brother, Speaker Corey Johnson, Ramon Martinez, Laura Popa, Beth Gullib, and Chief Staff Jonathan Shutt, and Legislative Director Ahmed Nazar. I invite all my colleagues who have yet to sign on to sign on to these school safety bills introduced by myself. By today, Speaker Johnson, Council Members Matteo, Brandon, Amphrey Samuel, Constantinides, Deutsch, Rose, and Menchaker. And the last question is, find me a parent who's content with the level of security at their child's school. I haven't found that one yet. Thank you, Madam Adams. Thank you. Council Member Adams, do you want to do your introduction? Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I rise again <laughs> to uh, proudly introduce uh, Intro 867 legislation to represent countless New Yorkers living in densely populated communities who experience the difficulty of traveling down two-way streets jammed with parked vehicles on either side, leaving minimal safe space for walking or driving. I'm extremely proud of this legislation, which I encourage my colleagues to sign on to. This bill will require the Department of Transportation to conduct a citywide traffic study of street widths, taking into account traffic volume and factors that narrow our streets. Based on the determination of that study, the DOT will evaluate and change street traffic flow where appropriate, in including two-way street to one-way street conversions. 
There are far too many narrow streets in the city of New York, making it cumbersome and dangerous to navigate, especially in two-way traffic. This problem is only exacerbated in the event of snow conditions. Numerous communities will benefit from this common sense legislation as it promises to decrease traffic volume on narrow streets, increase roadway capacity, and enhance pedestrian safety. Thank you, Laura Popa, and your team for your help. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Councilmember Kalos. Today, I uh, rise to uh, reintroduce legislation that I was proud to work with our public advocate, Tish James, Councilmember Danique Miller, and uh, actually our, a person I was proud to call our president, Barack Obama, uh, relating to helping people save for retirement. The uh, sad truth is most people don't actually have access to retirement vehicles through their employers. They don't have 401ks. Good luck getting one of those at McDonald's. And so what we wanted to do together was say that the city of New York should be able to open up our amazing pension system and allow people in the private sector to save for retirement and so we could avoid our what we're looking at is an over $10 trillion retirement deficit. That is the deficit between how much people have saved for retirement and how many public dollars it will take to care for them. Uh, incomes, and this is something worked with Mayor de Blasio, Comptroller Stringer, our previous speaker, AARP, and so many advocates from all over our nation. In comes uh, Donald Trump, and despite a Republican value of personal responsibility, uh, Steve Bannon, on the, his top 10 list, was stopping us from getting this bill done. And so uh, they, they, passed they passed legislation in Congress to block us from doing so. But that being said, that's not going to stop myself, our, uh, our civil service and labor chair, Danique Miller, or our public advocate, Tish James. We will continue to fight and make sure that Congress does the right thing so that we can help people save for their retirements. So I please urge you to please sign on to Introduction 888. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez. Thank you, public advocate. Uh, today I would like to speak and ask my colleagues to support to introduction 905 and 909, which, which is trying to give the dignity to uh, more than one million New Yorkers buried in the largest cemetery that we have in the nation. A cemetery should not be a prison for the dead. It should be a place where those who lost a loved one they should reflect and connect with those individuals. The distressing situation on Heart Island is a matter of social justice and equity. Heart Island is the size of the nation's largest public cemetery that holds over one million bodies of the poor and the immigrants. It is a disgrace that these bodies are laid to rest without the dignity and respect that they deserve. The city cemetery must not be run as a prison by the Departments of Correction. It should be a transfer to a more appropriate agency and we must establish city ferry services to the island. And by the way, and I'm not advocating for the ferry to be going from a city island, but we should talk about if those ferries should be going from Manhattan or any other locations. The deceased and the family members are part of our society and should be not treated as a second class citizens. We must not ignore the immigration angle of this, especially given that we are a sanctuary city. Many of those who have loved ones on the island may be undocumented. Having a corrections office follow you in such a private moment is greatly unpleasant, but I can't imagine how it may be for someone who is undocumented that may choose not to visit the island out of the fear of the law enforcement. Or those that had to be waiting six months to schedule a visit to that cemetery. This must not be allowed to happen in New York City, a city that has opened its arms to the people from around the world and tired and the poor. This coming Wednesday, we're gonna be celebrating 150 years of this cemetery, and we're putting a tour together with electives and also any other advocates. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cornegie. I'll pass, Madam Public Thank Advocate. You. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I, uh, mm -hmm. I want to uh, take this quick opportunity to um, mention legislation that I'm introducing today uh, regarding uh, lead poisoning in relation to lead-based pain hazards in one and two family homes. Um, as, 
as you may know, I've, I worked in, uh, in, 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 in lead poisoning issues um, prior to joining the council. Um, there are still way too many children throughout New York City that are suffering lead poisoning, particularly at lower levels, um, that I, uh, I'm excited that this council is taking up addressing those issues of, of uh, children within um, the, uh, the range that is uh, not uh, currently uh, taken on by the city of New York, um, but also looking at uh, making sure that there are remediations in one and two family homes uh, so that uh, every child in New York City, not just those in larger uh, buildings, um, uh, have the opportunity uh, to not be poisoned in their homes. Um, and, and so I want to thank the speaker for this package of legislation. I'm excited to be part of it. Um, I also want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, the great work that Margaret has done for many years at the Land Use Division and shepherding through um, and working with so many council members on these major land use projects and the minor land use projects, but all of these issues that we've spent so much time working on. And I'd also like to acknowledge Peg Toro. Um, as as uh, I've, I've told this body before, um, uh, my wife and I uh, had uh, to go through the process of IVF in order to have our child. And um, uh, IVF is a very difficult process and involves a lot of navigating of the health insurance aspects of it. And um, I could say with absolute certainty that if it wasn't for Peg Toro helping us navigate through that process, uh, we wouldn't have our daughter. So I want to thank Peg for all the work that she has done uh, for, for my family and for, uh, and for all of the council and council staff uh, that, uh, that she's worked with over the years. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Peg, and thank you. Councilmember Cumbo. I want to start off by wishing all mothers a happy Mother's Day. This is going to be, thank you, thank you. This is going to be my first Mother's Day, and I'm thrilled, and I'm excited, and I want to wish my mother a happy Mother's Day. And I just admire mothers so much more now. You have to wake up in the morning, you have to get yourself dressed, you have to get your baby dressed, you have to get the bottles, you have to change the diapers, you have to make your food, you have to do the dishes, maybe you might try and do a little exercise, you have to play with the baby, you have to feed the baby, you have to breastfeed, and you have to be out the door by 8 a.m. So, <laughs> and seven or eight if there's a legislative breakfast. So I just wanna say hats off to all the moms here. You do phenomenal work to all the dads that work in partnership. This is an amazing time, and so God bless all the mothers and even those that have the nerve to have two, three, four, or five children. I don't know how you do it. And then some have the nerve to have grandchildren. God bless you. Phenomenal. <laughs> but I stand today not just because we want roses and flowers and chocolates and candy for Mother's Day. We want all of that too, but what we need is legislation. And I am proud. <laughs> I am proud to work with Speaker Corey Johnson, and I also want to thank Laura Popa for introducing this amazing package of Mother's Day legislation that's designed to help us in all aspects of raising a family in the city of New York. We are going to address issues around breastfeeding. While we recognize that this is nature's best milk for a baby, it's so hard to do throughout New York City. And through this legislative package, we are going to change that. We're also going to make sure that we address issues around lactation rooms throughout the Department of Education, schools, police precincts, city jail facilities, and more. We're also going to be addressing issues around mortality. Maternal mortality is an issue that impacts particularly women of color, and we want to make sure that all women have equal access to health and education as it pertains to their mortality. And finally, just a few more, we're going to address bills around campaign funds to be used for child care and babysitting. I know that I was fortunate to have my colleagues to help me during my campaign, particularly Corey Johnson watched my baby, but not everyone can have the speaker watch their son while they're campaigning. I also want to make sure that we address issues around allowing women to choose the sex or gender of the doctor while they are receiving care within our jail system. And finally, we're going to address issues around uh, paid family leave, we're going to address issues around unlicensed child care facilities, and we're also going to address issues around uh, child care and making sure that all of the city of New York has access to child care centers. UPK3 is great. 
paid family leave, which we don't have, and is coming, is going to be great. But those years between three months and three years are critical for so many families. So happy Mother's Day. Help is on the way. And I'm proud to work with all of my colleagues to make this possible. Thank you, and happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Councilmember McCombo, legislation is good, but what about a spa? Right. Councilmember Deutsch. Uh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Everyone done laughing at Lori's jokes? Okay. <laughs> so first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Peg Toro for retire, uh, for your, on your retirement from the City Council to babysit for Franny, uh, Steve Levin's uh, little girl. Uh, so congratulations uh, on that, and congratulations, Steve. So now you have someone watching your child 24 hours. Uh, anyway, thank you, Madam Speaker. Today, Councilman Paul Vallone and I are introducing Intro 880, which is part of a package of bills that aims to make our city public and non-public schools safer. Intro 880 requires the Department of Education and the NYPD to work together to determine the, visi the visi feasibility and installing security cameras outside and inside of schools. Security cameras can be a deterrent against crimes, protecting students, administrators, and visitors. They also provide a method, particularly in larger schools, for security staff to easily survey the grounds of a school and ensure that everyone is safe. In this age of rising school violence, we must ensure that we, as a council, are doing our part to protect the 1.1 million public school children and the hundreds of thousands of non-public school students in New York City. Intro 880 and the entire package of bills is, is a dramatic step forward in that effort, and I thank my colleague Councilmember Paul Vallone for his leadership and partnership uh, on, on Intro 880. So I urge my colleagues to please sign on. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Joni. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. As the representative of the Hot Island area and someone who's regularly in communication with local leaders and community activists, with respect for my colleagues that support Intro 906 and Intro 909, I cannot support these bills. Before worrying about bringing the island ferry service and turn it into a park, we must address the most immediate concern regarding Hart Island, doing something about the remains that are washing out into the Long Island Sound. Dealing with the remains should be the only priority at this time. We must give those buried there the dignity that they deserve. Our community does not need ferry service to Hart Island. What our districts need is ferry service for the living to the island of Manhattan. With all due respect to my colleagues, I will fight to prevent the focus of this issue from drifting off the real concern of honoring the deceased and respecting their families. I ask my colleagues and anyone with compassion to support me on this. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. First, I want to call my colleagues' attention to a bill which I've introduced, I believe it's 30A, and it's a part of the lead bills. And this one talks about a water filtration system in the schools. But I also want to share with you a brief bio of Reverend Dr. James Cohn, who passed this April 28th. He was a theologian, a minister, a distinguished professor at Union Theological Seminary, and the author of 11 books. He was the first African-American to earn a PhD in systemic theology from Northwestern University. He was an advocate and fighter for racial justice, and for decades he spoke about the racial inequalities that persisted in the form of economic injustice, mass incarceration, and police shootings. He proclaimed the gospel as a voice of the oppressed and marginalized. Quote, the Christian gospel is a religion of liberation a religion that says God created all people to be free. But I realize that for black people to be free, they must first love their blackness. His 1969 book, Black Theology and Black Power, is considered the founding text of black liberation theology. Black liberation theology is a presentation of his hermeneutical position that is an interpretation of the Christian gospel from the experiences and perspectives of lives of people who are at the bottom of society, the lowest economic and racial groups. Dr. Da Dr. Daniel Jose Camacho says, Cohn's position is not simply about experience, but a direct assault on theology's entanglement with white racism. He was, critique he was criticizing whiteness before virtually anyone 
in the Theology Academy realized what it was and the fact that it was a problem. In November 2017, Dr. Cohn won the Gromeyer Award in Religion with the accompanying $100,000 prize for his book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree, which drew parallels between the crucifixion of Jesus and the lynching of black people in the United States. Dr. James Cohn said, quote, I write because writing is the way I fight. Teaching is the way I resist doing what I can to subvert white supremacy. He just recently passed and uh, he's great work and he will be sorely missed. Thank you. Councilmember Chin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I wanted to call my colleagues' attention to intro 873 and 874, part of the larger lead reform package. We know the detrimental impact that exposure to lead particles in the soil or lead in paint chips can be detrimental to vulnerable New Yorkers. It can lead to behavioral problems, slow growth, and learning disability among young children. It can cause irreversible damage to pregnant women and their baby. In 1960, the city of New York banned the use of lead paint, and in 1978, lead paint was banned nationwide. In 2004, local laws set a goal for the city, eliminate lead in all of our residential buildings by 2010. Well, that has yet to happen. Out of the 1.45 million pre-1960 apartment units in New York City, only 45,000 of these units, or 3.1%, have done this. Intro 873 will require landlords to permanently remove or permanently cover any lead paint within an apartment unit once it's become unoccupied five years after the passage of this law. Intro 874 would increase coordination between Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and the Department of Buildings when construction work blows lead particles into residential units and within common area. It would also allow the Department of Building to issue a stop work order if the units has received a notice of lead paint hazard. Some might say this is a burden on building owners and landlord and that it would cost too much, but the true cost is to our vulnerable children and family who have to live with the real fear of lead pain in their own home. Even though the federal government and the city sets an allowable lead level in a person's bloodstream, no amount of lead in our children's bloodstream is safe. These two bills will strengthen our city's effort to make sure our homes are clean, secure, and free of harmful toxins. So I asked my, I asked my colleague to sign on to the whole package. Thank you. Council Member Koo. Madam Public Advocate, before yes. um, Council Member Koo speaks, I just want to say, and I should have said this given that all the members are saying it, I think this package of bills on lead is very, very important. I look forward to the hearings. And I really want to give credit to Council Member Bill Perkins, who when he was in this body uh, earlier, uh, in his career, he was one of the major proponents and champions on lead paint and the work that was done. And we are really building on something that he started many years ago. And I really want to thank him and recognize him for the work that he did all those years ago. Uh, thank you very much, Council Member Koo. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Pu uh, Public Speaker, uh, Public Advocate. <laughs> Sorry. I'd like to join my colleagues in thanking Margaret Griffin for her service to the Land Use Committee. Margaret, thank you for you uh, keeping the ever busy Land Use Committee on task and on schedule. And I also like to congratulate Pat Torvo on her well-deserved retirement. Pat has processed every single person uh, who has worked in my office including myself. <laughs> she, she's an amazing professional who has always made herself available to help answering questions. Uh, she has always taken problems into her own hands to help troubleshoot complicated administrative issues. She's also a fellow Queens resident. So I hope I will see her soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Williams. 
Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to bring my colleagues to uh, in attention to intro 925 about communal van bills uh, last term. Thanks to this body and particularly Councilmember Miller and others, we did a bunch of legislation uh, bringing uh, vans to the forefront. Um, unfortunately, uh, when it comes to enforcement, there's a quirk in the law where the TLC cannot enforce the laws uh, for vans over 20 passengers. So many of us that have this transportation network are now experiencing uh, vans with no license, uh, with no insurance, over 20 passengers to skirt the law. This bill is meant to correct that, to provide TLC the ability to provide uh, the safety measures that are needed. So I ask all of my colleagues to please support that. I'm going to, I'm horrified of a council without Peg Toro. I don't know if someone's gonna allow me to ask 40 questions over and over again and still not do what I was told to do. So what I hope is that whoever comes in, they understand they have uh, very, very big shoes to fill. Um, the Sergeant Benevolent Association uh, recently had a Twitter war with uh, the CCRB. You are all a disgrace. You sit on your ass and target the NYPD all while growing up on the nipple of what's easy. You have no clue what an NYPD officer does, yet target us and disparage our integrity. One day you will dial 911 when evil is at our, your door, and thank God for the NYPD. Uh, now, Ed Mullins, who is the head of Sergeant Benevolent Association, would make an awesome police chief in the Jim Crow South. Uh, but we are going to do our best to make sure we don't go backwards. Uh, when I think about him and people like uh, David Clark, who the New York Chiefs have invited to be their keynote speaker, it is depressing uh, to know that this is the people we have to have honest discussions about policing issues. And my hope at some point uh, people will understand the, the fear that they're putting into uh, too many people in this city and in the state and in this nation. Uh, lastly, I want to congratulate Governor uh, of New Jersey for passing their version of the DREAM Act. That is real leadership. That is not lip service like we see here too often. And uh, uh, in just a few minutes, I'm going up to CUNY. They are going to be entertaining a bill which, like the Genesis decision in unions, uh, can get rid of night perks. So many people who know New York Public Interest Research Group, uh, CUNY may pass a piece of uh, a rule not allowing students uh, to give funding to NYPIRG. And my hope is people will do their best to reject that. I am a former NYPIRGian, got a lot of training there. I know a lot of us did. Thank you. Thank you. Now, last speaker is Councilmember Rose. Thank you, um, Madam AG, um, public advocate. Um, I'd like to piggyback on Councilmember Vallone's uh, very important school safety package, um, two of which uh, are created, one of which is created to to create a school security task force. Um, that's intro 9112 with Council Member Cabrera um, would require that the task force review infrastructure security technologies and intro 872 with Council Members Brennan, Matteo, Torres and I are requiring that that task force review a public no notification for school emergencies and for uh, the people who drive I'm introducing intro 911 to suspend parking meter rules on major holidays, including but not limited to Christmas, John Kipper, Rosh Hashanah, Ash Wednesday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Orthodox Holy Thursday, Orthodox Good Friday, the first two and last two days of Passover, El, um, Id al Fitir, Id al Adha. Asian Lunar New Year, and the Hindu festival of Diwali, and all state and national holidays. <laughs> I hope that you will support all of these bills which address the quality of life and school safety issues that are of the utmost importance to all New Yorkers. Thank and you. There's gonna be no meter parking in New York City when exactly. Debbie Rose is done. <laughs> Lastly, let me just done. say, I just asked my colleagues to co-sponsor ni uh, intro 900, which would require the Department of Education to report three times a year on the provision of special education services to students with um, individual education plans, or IEPs. And now the speaker to close. Uh, good night and good luck. The stated meeting of May 9th, 2018 is hereby adjourned. <laughs>